Good morning, everyone. So we have a lot to talk about today. Um, so if one of you amazing people watching could timestamp for me and put it in the comments, that I would be eternally grateful, and I will send you some he healing energy, if you could do that for me. Um, so the first person who timestamps all of this for me, I'll pin at the top, okay? Um, so we're going to talk Libra New Moon Ritual. We're going to talk the healing energy that we're all going through right now and how to navigate it. We are going to talk about um, something new and exciting that I'm really excited to show you guys. Really excited to show you guys this. Like, I just want to rush through everything else so I can show this to you because I'm just excited to show it to you. Anyways, um, so that, and then we're going to look at the, the energy through the cards and see what it is that spirit wants us to know today. So with this Libra new moon ritual, we're just going to go through all of the steps. We're not going to do the full ritual right now. If you would like to be a part of the full manifestation ritual that we will be doing tomorrow for like during the actual new moon, because the new moon is tomorrow, and the new moon actually occurs in the morning at nine degrees Libra. But we will be doing the ritual tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And if you'd like to be a part of that, you can register for it on my website. The link for that is in the description box below. Um, so I'm going to tell you what you guys need. So this one is very simple. You don't need a lot of stuff. Um, you can improvise when it comes to the candles. Like I like to use, because what we're gonna be doing at the Libra New Moon is releasing things into the universe and manifesting new things. Because this is a super moon, it's gonna be very, very powerful. It's going to be one of those moons where it almost feels like a full moon, okay? And during full moons, we release energy. And um, so with this, new moon because it's not a full moon it's a new moon with this new moon we will and it's called the dark moon it's a super moon super moon just means that it's closer to earth so the energy is stronger that's one of the reasons why it feels kind of like a full moon um so i like to use a black candle for releasing and a white candle for manifesting and bringing in so i have one of each you don't have to have two candles if you have one candle that's pink or red or whatever, just use what you have. Don't rush out. <laughs> but um, for me, I like to do this because my black candle releases into the universe because I get really in depth when it comes to my rituals that I do, okay? And then for me, white is manifesting and bringing it in. A bowl of water. We're going we're, we're gonna to use the water to put out the paper that we'll be setting on fire. So we'll have a bowl of water. It doesn't have to be a fancy bowl. I'm just using glass. You can be aluminum or like the steel bowls, like a cooking bowl, whatever you have. Um, sage, whatever you have to cleanse yourself. You can use sage or palo santo wood. A lot of people ask me, what do I do if I'm traveling and I can't burn something where I am? Um, metaphysical shops have sprays that you can use that are um, for cleansing. So you can cleanse your aura with a spray if you don't have this stuff. Um, if you don't, I highly recommend this. Sage is very inexpensive, especially if you get it on like Amazon. And I buy it in bulk because <laughs> I use it so much. Um, but like I bought a pound of sage last year and I have like a quarter of the bag left because it was a huge bag that came in. And I don't use the bundled up sage because I feel like this is a little bit more effective for me. I'm using the leafy sage and not the bundled sage, okay? And then you'll want a piece of paper and a pen to write your intentions down. And um, so like you'll just have a blank piece of paper and a pen to write your intentions down. So when we start, what you'll do is you'll start by cleansing your aura. And again, we're going to do this whole ritual tomorrow night along with meditation. And you're going to receive Reiki healing, a Reiki healing transmit 
during that the whole ritual. So um, you cleanse your aura with the smoke of the sage or the Palo Santo wood um, and like all your whole aura. And while you're doing this, I want you to say these words. I invite the pure divine energy to cleanse my mind, body, and spirit. May it fill me with clear light that I may shine out into the world. Okay, one more time. I invite the pure, I have it all written down, right? I invite the pure divine energy to cleanse my mind, body, and spirit. May it fill me with clear light that I may shine out into the world. Okay? So you've cleansed yourself. So then I want you to take your piece of paper and I want you to write down and it only like, seriously, like make it a small piece of paper because you don't want to start like a fort, like a fire, right? Um, so you'll write down the intention that you're releasing. And because Libra is ruled by Venus, um, focus on your relationships. It doesn't have to be romantic. It can be a friendship. It could be family members. I mean, this is like perfect for me right now because of all the healing and the lessons that I'm learning when it comes to relationships that I have in my life. Um, and this includes family members. It includes friends. It includes soulmates. It includes romantic partners, like everything, right? This Libra moon, you want to release. So like, for example, you could write down the intention um, uh, to release any and all expectations of, um, really of, of like a particular person coming into your life, right? Because you want to manifest that person, so you need to release the expectations. Do you see what I'm saying? When we're trying to manifest something into our life, we have to release it. We have to let it go. We, if, because trying to manifest things and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing is actually pushing it away. So the more you try and like manic manifest, right? Like try and crazy manifest. I love that word, manic manifest. Get, um, Gabby Bernstein uses it. Um, when you're like, but Betsy, I've done everything. I've meditated. I've done this. I've done that. I've, I, I set my intentions. I do my rituals. I do all the things, right? Um, and I convene with God and, and it never happens and it never works for me. And that's because you're trying too hard. Instead of constantly focusing on the intention of I want, I want, I want, I desire, I desire, desire, you have to release, 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 okay? That's going to help the universal energy to flow, all right? So you're going to write down what you're releasing, and then on a separate piece of paper, small piece of paper, write down what you want to attract into your life. For example, I want to, tr to attract a loving bond and a loving relationship, like if this is for a romantic thing, I want to attract a loving bond and a loving relationship with my soulmate who's for my highest good. The last three words are very key, or the last four words, for my highest good. Because sometimes what we are trying to, what we want and desire and need, what we think we want and desire and need, isn't for our highest good. It's a lesson that we're supposed to learn. And sometimes in those lessons, it's very, very painful or you feel very, very attracted to a particular person because they're supposed to be teaching you a lesson, right? Um, so then we're going to do the burning. So the paper that you wrote, what you're releasing, you will burn it under the candle flame and you, and like I'll be burning my, that's why I'm holding it over here. I guess I should probably show you. I'm not gonna actually burn paper here because I can't imagine can you imagine what would happen? So like you got your piece of paper, you fold it, and actually you fold it um, away. You can either fold it away from you or just hold it, whatever, however you want to do it. And you hold it over the flame and you say this, I release this burden into the universe with faith. And faith isn't hoping that God will show up for you. Faith is knowing 
that it'll show that he'll show that God will show up for you. Source, energy, whatever, the universe, whoever it is to you, whoever your guidance is, right? So faith isn't hoping, it's knowing. That's faith. So we are releasing this burden into the universe with faith. And then you'll drop it into the water when it gets to that point to where it's going to burn you. You drop it in the water. That's what the water is there for. And then your other piece of paper for what you're bringing into your life, you would say, the one that you're attracting, allow me to be receptive. Allow me to be receptive to the treasures that present themselves enriching my life's journey. One more time. Allow me to be receptive to the treasures that present themselves enriching my life's journey. And then after, and then you put it, of course, in the water. Don't set it down somewhere to burn the house down. And once you've done that, I want you to meditate on it. And I want you to feel the joy, how it would feel if you already had the thing that you're trying to attract into your life. I want you to feel not the anger, not the sadness, not the I want. I want you to feel what it would feel like to actually have that in your life. And I want you to sit with that for five, ten minutes. Okay? So that is the Libra New Moon ritual. We're already, see, we're already at 11 minutes. Like I knew that that was going to take up a whole lot of stuff. So I'm going to pause this. I'm going to clear everything out and then we'll get started on the energy. I'll probably talk about the energy as I do the cards. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. You guys don't have to timestamp this part. Um, but I have to show this to you. I'm so excited. So this ring that I showed you guys probably like a month ago. We have it. It's here. I only have 15 of them. So um, it comes in this really sweet little box. This is just the size. This is size six. So we have size six, seven, and eight. And it's just a beautiful. If you want to see up close pictures, go to my website. It's just a beautiful, beautiful ring. I'm trying to like show you guys it's this is jade onyx um we have kind of had a problem with the shipping of the um lapis the blue because i have a light blue or like a not really light blue but like a sky um it's like this color blue that kind of blue anyway so that one we're doing but we've had some issues with the shipping and stuff just because it's like customs and all that jazz so um those are not going to be available until like the end of october but these are available now um they're just they're i can't say enough fabulous things about um dell who is my jeweler he's amazing he's he's a freaking artist he's a genius <sighs> so i don't know about you guys <laughs> <laughs> don't you love it when we start a reading like that? I don't know about you guys, but this current energy is really digging deep to heal. And there are a couple of aspects that are happening that are helping the healing process. But, um, it's all your ego is going to battle you through this. And so what I want to say to you, especially for those who are getting readings with me right now, like personal readings with me, um, we have a few left that are the 30 minute personal readings at $60. Um, so if you want to get a reading with me in October, make sure you do that. After that, I'm not doing readings for a while. Um, I'll do like birthday readings, but that's it because I have some other things in store that are planned. I'm really excited about. Um, but if you're getting a reading with me right now at this time and you're really extra sensitive, you need to know that I'm going to, I get the information from spirit that you're supposed to hear. You're hearing what you need to know, not what you want to know. Uh, I've always said, I will not coddle your ego. 
I will not tell you that um, I'm not going to like pat you on the back and say, no, no, everything's going to be okay. If you continue to just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, you're going to be fine. Right? Um, and I'm not even trying to um, be right. You know what I mean? I'm telling you what spirit needs to hear, what, what spirit wants you, needs you to hear. Um, so we have very interesting. Sun is opposing Chiron. We talked about that a couple of days ago. If you haven't, if you didn't watch the daily reading for the Sun opposing Chiron, um, go check out the daily reading from a couple days ago. Uh, we have Mercury squaring Pluto. We have Jupiter squaring Neptune. And so, and those are like the big, big, like today we also have the moon squaring Jupiter and the moon opposing Neptune, but that's going to, and the moon trining Pluto. So all of these things together, all of these squares and trines and everything with Pluto and Neptune and Chiron and Jupiter, it's making everything extra, 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 right? Everything you say. Everything you put out there, everything you um, are pushing forward in life right now, you're adding a little extra oomph to it, but also at the same time, there are things that are coming at you that are for healing and growth purposes. And again, I'll have people say, Betsy, why, why is this happening? Why do we have to go through this? Well, the purpose in life is to heal, learn, and grow. And be amazing. Your own kind of amazing. Right? But we forget who we are. We, for our, we forget our soul, you know, we forget the soul's purpose and why we're actually here. Um, and that's what the wake up call is. And then we have to go through a huge ego death. And when you're going through that ego death, sometimes it's very hard to hear when somebody is um, telling you what you need to hear, but you don't want to hear it. You're like, whatever, right? And again, it's, it's the fact that you want to, like the fact that, that, that right now the healing is so dramatic and it's so punctuated, it sort of makes some people want to fight. I feel like there are decisions being made right now when it comes to stability, balance, moving forward, like all the things, right? And the decisions that you're trying to make right now, so, and I'll show you the cards here in a minute, but the decisions you're trying to make right now, there are certain expectations that you're holding on to when it comes to these decisions that you really need to release, like allow yourself to be, to, to free, you need to free yourself from the holds of expectations, expectations for yourself, expectations for other people, expectations of the universe. Because I guarantee you what's going to come, you have zero, I mean, like, you're literally going to look at all of that and be like, oh, I, that was not what I was expecting, right? Those words exactly. And I've said that so many times on my journey. It's like not even funny anymore. It's like, oh, wow, I really wasn't expecting that. Okay, all right. Plot twist, right? There's always a plot tri twist on this journey. But it's just because we um, hold ourselves to a certain standard and expectation. And when we don't get that standard or expectation, that's when we start to think, oh, well, the whole universe must be against me. It's not about the universe being against you. It's about you being against yourself. Because your true authentic self is trying to show up. And you holding on to expectations of what things are supposed to look like. 
is just fighting the universal flow, right? Okay, so the cards we have, we have the Two of Pentacles, the Knight of Wands, and the Knight of Pentacles, okay? Um, the decisions that you're trying to make right now, it, it's almost as if you feel like you make a decision and then everything slows down. And you're like, well, shit, okay, I guess that wasn't the decision I was supposed to make. Maybe it was the decision you were supposed to make, you just have to be patient. You just have to allow yourself to get through the uncomfortable part of it, right? When it, it's like we make a decision and things start to slow down and life gets really uncomfortable because things start to slow down and now you're like, oh crap, okay. But maybe you're just learning patience right now and learning to accept that things are gonna flow naturally when it's time, when, it's, when they're supposed to. That's what divine timing is. It's not our timing, it's divine right? So then we have the Page of Swords. I'm not surprised the Page of Swords is out. The Four of Pentacles and the Eight of Wands. When, the Page of Swords for me is like this Mercury Pluto, Mercury squaring Pluto, because there are some harsh things that are being, and it's not even, it, it's not even harsh on purpose. I feel like there are harsh things being said right now, or people are like coming out of the woodwork and really triggering you by their words because that's what Mercury does. And you're, the reason why it's happening is for you to take pause. Like I know where my healing is happening right now in relationship, like I said, with the, the Libra New Moon stuff in relationships and all of the things. I know where my healing is happening. And just the fact that... Um, you are becoming conscious just because just the fact that somebody is triggering you and you're becoming consciously aware of that trigger and consciously aware of like where you're supposed to be going the next step that you're supposed to be taking all of those things right so um the fact that it's happening should show you that the energy is about to shift in a really big way and when i say that the energy is about to shift in a really big way I literally mean you're going to go from stagnancy or feeling really, really slow to things speeding up like in supersonic ways. And the reason why is because you finally stopped fighting it. That four of pentacles right here, this guy, once he releases his expectations of the fact, like the reason why the four of pentacles is about the miserly guy is because He's holding on to everything he has for dear life because he doesn't think that he's going to get any more, right? And once you release and you become an open vessel to receive Eight of Wands, but you also have to look at it in all of the lessons that the universe is trying to teach you right now about yourself. Every single one of them is... For your highest good and to heal because the universe god source buddha whoever it is right your guidance that you pray to or you meditate to is 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 only working for your highest good there is no such thing as um the universe must hate me I must be a very unlucky person. I must be this. I must be that. What it is, is if you feel like the universe is against you, you're actually against yourself. You're fighting against your very nature and yourself. If you think you're extremely unlucky and bad things keep happening and bad things keep happening and bad things keep happening, is because you're only focusing on the bad things that keep happening instead of making happy things, attracting happy things into your life. And how do you do that? You realize that you deserve it. You have faith. Remember, faith is not hoping that God will show up. Faith is knowing that God will show up. Releasing the expectations, right? So let's clarify the two of pentacles.
Four of Swords. When you have a decision to make, you need to meditate. Four of Swords. The Four of Swords is about quiet time. It's about healing. It's about um, allowing yourself to get in touch with, it's like, there, there's a reason why it's really good to meditate or to try and manifest things before you go to bed. Because when you're sleeping, you're in a state of relaxation already. Hopefully, most of us are. Um, so, and you're, you're in a state of least resistance. You're not resisting anything when you're sleeping, right? So that's why meditation is very key. And if you have a hard time meditating, join at least one of the meditation and Reiki healing circles because I teach you, I guide you through a meditation. So I literally teach you how to do it. And we're even going to do it for the new moon ritual tomorrow. So you can join for that as well. Um, come to at least one because then you get it recorded and you can watch it as many times as you need to. And each time it will be a different kind of meditation to manifest new things into our life, right? So when you're trying to make a decision, and people who have had readings with me, they know that I'm always going to ask, especially if they've had multiple readings with me, and they're like, well, I'm trying to make this decision in my life, and I don't want to know, and they always know my first question. Are you meditating? Are you getting quiet? Are you learning how to listen to that very soft whisper of your, your higher self? Because the Knight of Wands is telling me also that, I don't know, I don't, it's very wishy-washy, right? The nature of it is very wishy-washy. And we have strength on the Knight of Wands. So, again, when you're in a state of disarray and you're like, I don't know which direction I'm supposed to be going in. I have no idea what to do next. Getting quiet and meditating will bring you strength, okay? It will literally give you that, oh, ah, oh. and sorry, channeling. Um, it may not be after the first meditation, but like as you do it more and you get used to doing it and then you'll hear that voice be like, oh, I get it. Sometimes that voice, when I hear it, tells me things that I don't want to hear and I'm like, Man, and then I just have to have faith and go that direction, whether I like it or not. It's not always, life isn't always going to be fun. It can be really fun, but the more you overstress yourself, the more you overburden yourself, the more you push yourself to get things in life, the harder it is, the harder it is to attract, the harder it is to attract the things that you want the more you stress the energy, right? Um, and this slow, steady pro see here, and this is the problem. The slow, steady progress of that Knight of Pentacles, you're not seeing how that's benefiting you. You're not understanding, like, you're like, oh my God, why do I have to go through this? And it's taking forever for me to come out of it. Because you're not seeing the benefits of it. You have your eyes closed, two of swords. So we have indecision, indecision, indecision. And because it's going, it, it's not like, it, this isn't an instant gratification thing. The universe is not um, Instagram. It's not going to like hit a, a heart to, to make you feel instantly gratified about something, right? Yes, you look awfully cute today. Instant gratification, right? No, that's not, that's not how the universe works. The universe works and says, yes, so you, you want to receive all of this really amazing stuff. You want to receive and go on this really great, amazing adventure and journey. You want to receive this relationship. You want to receive, 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 receive. But I'm giving you opportunities to grow because I want to give you the best of what you're asking for. This is not about mediocrity. This is not about playing small. This is about getting the best that, that you can be given. And sometimes that takes time. And when I say that, 
time doesn't exist. So it could take a week, it could take a month, it could take a year, it could take a decade. But it's all in the way you look at that time frame. This time frame is for my growth, I'm being groomed for it, I'm being prepared for it. And that's about being in alignment, which is something that I'll be teaching during my alignment course that's available on October 5th. Please come and be a part of it. And here's the thing, is the more we fight the resistance, the more frustrated you become, and then you either lie to yourself or you go off on other people because you're frustrated. Whoa. Like, all right, we going to clarify that twice over? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know that manifesting things into your life can be, can be as simple as just speaking the words? But the energy that you have to have, that you have to hold within your soul, is that it's already yours. It already exists. And if you can't, in reality, like wrap your mind around the fact that what you're trying to manifest into your life already exists and is already yours, That's when you have to go back into a higher consciousness and realize um, that the energy that you give to something is the energy you're going to get back from it. Okay? Hear me out on this. I know that I know it's a little confusing. And again, we go more in depth during the self-alignment course. Um so that it's easier to manifest things into life, into existence. But on the Page of Swords, we get the Page of Wands and the Nine of Cups. If you're manifesting from a place of sadness or anger or pain or healing, you're putting a negative energy onto that thing that you really want. And you don't want to receive that thing out of negativity. You want to receive that thing out of abundance and knowing that you deserve it and that it's already yours. And here's the thing is sometimes when we get to a certain place in our spiritual journey, the ego shows up and says, oh, this is, that's too good to be true. You're not going to get that. It's too, it's too good to be true. And so you start to hold on to everything that you already have because you're like, oh my God, if that's too good to be true, then I'm not going to be able to get anything else in my life. So I need to hunker down and hold on to everything. But if you can just transcend your ego by realizing that that is a big fat lie, nothing is too good to be true. It's the energy that you're giving to it. So here's, an ex here's a good example, because I know that a lot of people are, not a lot of people, but there are some people that are like, I really want to have this particular person in my life. If you've had a relationship with a person and you had to learn a lot of lessons from them and there was a lot of toxicity between in that relationship, but because you feel the connection, you're trying to manifest that person into your life. There's already a blanket of negative energy around that manifestation before you even try. So when we're manifesting, it's for our highest good. And it makes us feel joy. If you're trying to manifest somebody in your life that made you feel really crappy, why would you even want to do that? You've already got a negative energy blanketing the situation. Do you see what I'm saying? So, because people will ask me sometimes, they're like, well, I've been trying to manifest and manifest and manifest and manifest this particular relationship in my life. And I'm like, so, so you don't know this person or you, oh no, we dated. We dated it. We just, we broke up. And I was like, well, why did you break up? 
well, dot, 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 all the healing, all of the lessons, all of the triggers, dot, 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 all of it, right? And they spill. And I, and I look, and I go, oh. So you want to manifest some more of that negativity into your life and toxicity into your, that's what you want to manifest into your life. The waiting, the ghost, you want to manifest that more? No, but I want to have this person in my life. We have a connection. Oh, okay. Do you see what I'm saying? It's not, if it's not for your highest good and that's what you're trying to manifest, I guarantee you, you're going to be manifesting until you're blue in the face. Right? Don't hold your breath, basically. The universe is not in the game of bringing things into your life that aren't for your highest good. Now, having that relationship brought into your life to begin with was to teach you lessons about growth, about loving yourself, about like whatever it was. So at, there was one point that that relationship served you. But we all have to be real to ourselves and say, is this really serving me? Is this not serving me? Right? So when you're releasing expectations into the universe in order to manifest new things into your life, so we have the Ace of Cups on the Four of Pentacles. And the Ace of Cups for me is loving yourself. It's the gift from the universe to learn how to love yourself. So when you start to release the expectations, which is what the Four of Pentacles is asking you to do, you've got to release expectations so you can, you can receive more, so you can attract more, right? But you also have to love yourself and know that you deserve everything that you're attracting. So, so like tomorrow when you're doing your Libra New Moon ritual, because it is tomorrow that you'll do it. So tomorrow when you're doing it, um, the thing that you're releasing, whatever it is that you're expecting to have, you have to release the expectations to that. And whatever you're attracting, you have to know that you deserve that. You can do the rituals. You can write on the paper. You can cleanse your aura all you want. But if you're not doing the work on the inside, releasing expectations, knowing that you deserve what you're attracting, right? Because when the energy picks up and you're in a lack mentality, the five of pentacles on the eight, the eight of wands, when the energy picks up and you're in a lack mentality, See what I mean? See how that happened? Because the universe wants to give you stuff, but you don't think you deserve it. Or you think that there's something that's too good to be true, right? And then we have the Four of Cups and the Fool. If you look at this, the, this is like the opposite of each other. The Four of Cups is very apathetic. He's not into receiving anything. And the Fool is like, you have to be open and vulnerable in order to receive. And that's the way it goes, right? And if you're not open and vulnerable, and if you don't build on your expectations, or you don't not build on them, you don't release your expectations and build on what you know that you deserve to attract into your life, it becomes very difficult. And then you're doing this from a sense of lack mentality. Instead of thinking that you um, cannot receive, you're coming from a place of lack. So, all right, you guys. Um, I love you all. Um, I hope you join me for tomorrow's Labor New Moon Ritual. Again, that information is in the description box. If you're interested in any of the rings, those are now available and information in the description box. And... Um, yeah, um, if you want to get a personal reading from me, now is the time to do it after Monday, because it's September 30th. After Monday, I am not going to be doing general, re I'm not going to be offering general readings for maybe a week or two, okay? 
um, just because I need a break in time. I'll be offering something else, but I'm not going to be offering the general readings. I love you guys. <laughs> See, I told you. There are some things that I'm cooking up. I'm always manifesting new stuff in, into existence. So I love you guys. Take really good care of yourselves this weekend. Um, I probably will not be on to do a daily reading. Um, but uh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I might surprise somebody. Um, I might surprise you guys and, and pop on live or something. I haven't decided yet. But um, have a wonderful weekend and take really good care of yourselves and I love you. Bye.